Very good morning, everybody. Good morning. So good to see you. Thank you so much for coming. It is uh, always, uh, it's always a privilege to spend some time together. I don't know exactly where you're from, except like these guys are here. These guys are from England, so I know these guys. Uh, Robert is uh, Hungarian from England. Let's just be very precise. Oh, from Serbia. That's th yes, you are, Robert. So I do apologize about that. Uh, uh, we have some English combination here, New Zealander. Canada. Canada? You're from Canada? Where are you from, sir? Oh, France. France, that's right. I know that. Germany. Germany? Germany? What about you guys? Where are you from? A second. Denmark. Denmark? Oh, yes. Sorry, I remember your face. Uh, Slovenia, I just, I just reminded myself. That's right. And uh, volunteers, thank you so much for coming and enlarging the number. This really is good for my ego. Sorry, I have to apologize. All right, listen, guys. Uh, we're gonna, um, uh, this, this, uh, this morning, we're going to go through, a, I believe, a very relevant topic in my life and life of many young people which live today and is under the title Unsatisfied Generation. Let me just ask you a question, like yesterday when I asked the question, why did you come to this workshop? Majority of people actually said something on the lines, like, you know, my life is all right, but actually, you know what? I'm really not happy where I am at the moment myself. And, 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 and that actually can be seen throughout, kind of generally, across especially younger generation. Somehow nothing is good enough and nothing is enough. In, and, and also before I go further on, if you see iPhone 6, somebody lost the iPhone 6, let me know. It's black color, is that right? Uh, and, and you will not be able to use it because it has a Canadian network or something like this. So guys, if you see iPhone 6, let me know. And I, straight from the iPhone 6, did you notice this thing, guys? That as a new phone comes out, it's like we find ourselves standing in a shop, looking at this iPhone 17 and, and this like, you know, Samsung, you know, 132. And we're like, oh, I want that one. Did you notice actually how actually, you know, I, I'm not anymore in those days, but like, like a new sneakers come out and you're like standing in a window, boy, like with a stick nose and like, mommy, I want that. And you're like, you're like 18, okay? It's like, did you notice actually how nothing seems to us to be kind of enough and we just want more? So my friends, let me tell you, I spent majority of my time working as a youth pastor. I was at Stanbrook Park Church. I was working with teenagers. And uh, it's, a, it's a great job. It's, it's just so beautiful. Uh, only problem is they're teenagers and they, 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 they're trying to kill you all the time. <laughs> to, like, everything they do, like, yeah, they want to trip you and stuff like this. I remember this day very clearly. You didn't know it was a fun day, by the way. I don't know if you today or not. Uh, but uh, what happened is this. My teenagers said, Dan, let's go to the theme park. You know, you know, you know the theme park, like uh, roller coasters and stuff like this? Well, Dan, like, oh, let's go to the theme park. You see, I'm a youth pastor, and we have one thing for, we need to be cool a little bit. If you're not cool a little bit, like teenagers, like, they're like, Pfft. it's like terrible stuff. It's like they, they, they throw hymns at you, and, and they, they didn't want to show up and stuff. So they came to me and said, hey, let's go to the theme park. And me trying to be a cool pastor, I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah let's go to the theme park. I'm like, N no, man, that's a terrible decision, totally that. But I couldn't change my mind. Watch this, 7 o'clock in the morning, I said on Sunday, 7 o'clock. Listen, we go to church on Saturday, okay? I get demolished on Saturday. Sunday is my hangover day. I don't know how you're going to translate that, but uh, <laughs> Sunday I'm like trying to fix myself from what happened on Sabbath. They want to go Sunday, like 7 o'clock. They want to be first in a queue. And guess what? Every single young person showed up 7 o'clock in the morning. There was a van, and they were all in a van sitting, waiting for me. The pastor. We need to go. So, <laughs> so I said, okay, let's pray first. We prayed, we went, and we went to this place in very close to London. And when I came there, uh, we microphone because they hate me. <laughs> so we came there in a queue, and as we were standing in a queue, first we were not first. No, no, no. We were like a 300. Like, you know, Koreans came before us, and, and, and Germans were there before us, and like everybody was like there before us. And so we are standing in a queue, and we are, I'm thinking, and as you're standing in the queue, they play the music in the background, like, dun, 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 dun. I'm like, I'm already pumped up with adrenaline, you know? I'm like, I'm scared for my life. And, and, and they, they're like, pom, 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 pom. And my teenagers are like, 
yeah, it's going to be good. I'm like, yeah, it's going to be good. I'm like, it's not going to be good. And he's like, you go there and you pay tons of money to go inside. And when you go inside, guess what? You have to stand in the queue again, okay? And so so, so they, came, they came to me and said, Pastor, let's go to this roller coaster called Nemesis. I'm like, you see, I, I, I studied school of English. My English is not very good. <laughs> but I knew the word Nemesis could not be anything nice. It's like, you know, it would not be nemesis for sure. It would be like something sweetie pie or something like nemesis. You know, I Google it and it says it's a beast, an animal. It's like, I'm like, I'm not going there. But you can't say that to teenagers because they will judge you straight away. And, and so what happened is this. We went for the nemesis. Not nemesis, inferno. It's, inferno. You, you know, wow. would you like to do my workshop? Is there, oh, the humble, inferno. Eh? Mansion inferno, okay. And so what is now and as we're standing in the queue there's like you know 50 people and if just in front of us there is this lady with like a boy and, and you can see she's like she's shaking and I'm like I'm like are you, are you all right and, and you can see she's on the edge you know and like are, 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 are you are you right she, she says I, I don't want to be here and I'm like I don't want to be here as well and she's like she's just started crying and I'm like this is terrible. She knows the nemesis is going to kill us or something like this. She's, she knows what's going to happen. So, 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 but I'm a pastor, so I'm thinking, let, let, me, let me do pastoral counseling. So I'm like, hey, would you like me to pray for you? And this lady in the middle of the park, in England, people don't pray on the street just to let you know. And this lady, was like, yes, please. So I like I pray for the dear God, save us from the nemesis, pretty much. It was terrible. I thought to open my office in the in a theme park, not at Stambro. And I remember this, guys. You know, we came there, the train arrived, as the train arrived, <clears throat> you know how it goes, two seats, two seats, two seats, two seats, two seats, and like I'm counting, and I'm like, I need to sit with somebody because I'm scared, so I can, you know, you know so I can be. As the train arrives, as it arrives, I realize teenagers, two, 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 and the last train is like, just and I'm like, you traitors. <laughs> so I jump on the train. I put this thing down on me, you know, and I, like I make sure it's all right. And then the train starts moving. And it's slowly going up and up. And I'm looking on the left. And I'm looking on the right. And I'm like, this is really high. And then I see a, a beautiful sunrise on the left-hand side. And a little four is there, and the train is going tuk, 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 tuk. I'm like, if it continues like this, we will end up in heaven for sure. It's an, it's like it just goes tuk, 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 tuk. And then he stops at the top of this, and I look from there, and I'm like, this is the most amazing view like I have seen in a long time. And the next thing that happens is this somebody released the handbrake, and we went. Whoosh, And I was trying to scream, but I couldn't. I was trying to like, just, I was just trying to, to sustain my heartbeat. And this wind was going in my face. And I realized, you know what, guys? Doesn't matter, I'm a Serbian man. I'm gonna, I'm gonna close my eyes. So I closed my eyes. And the train was going, and you can feel it, the movement, but you do not know where you are. You're like in the middle of this, I'm thinking, I need to, I need to do something. I, I decided I'm gonna open one of my eyes just to make sure. And I realized at that stage, this is not good. And then something started coming from here. And then I opened my mouth and then I started screaming like a little girl. Ah! And I was the louder than anybody else. My teenagers were like shouting, yeah! And I was like, ah! And, like, shoo, shoo, shoo. and I was like, you know, I was like, this is the time when you actually, even if you don't believe in God, you're like, you know, God, you need to come right now and take me from this. And, then, and, and as this thing was going around, I remember this very clearly. The wind was like getting easy on me. And I was like, you know, we are stopping. <laughs> and the teenagers like, yeah. And they start shouting, let's do this again. Let, let, let's do this again. And I'm at the back and I'm like, yeah, yeah let's do this again. It's like, uh, I got off the train. I didn't go anywhere after that, just to let you know. <laughs> my friends, as I went for this trip with my young people, I realized one thing for sure. I realized this, that the people in these days are searching for happiness in their life. And they're not just searching for happiness, they're desperate to find happiness in their lives. And today I would like us to actually 
Today, I would like us guys to distinguish the two, two words. There is thing which I call happiness, and I believe it comes in, in, from the world. And there is this thing that I call joy, and it comes from God himself. My friends, I can tell you this for sure. That those people who left the theme park that day, they had a great day, they had amazing adventure. But when they came home, I have a feeling that happiness remained with them for a little while. But actually, straight after that, they returned to default to what it used to be where they were. So today, my friends, I would like to say this, that if you are in search for happiness, you're searching for them. Maybe this is not a good way to go, but if you're searching for the, for the, for the deeper uh, sense of being and deeper uh, way of living, which I call um, a joy, I think we are searching for the right thing. Apostle Paul explains this. He is writing the letter to the churches and he says this, what has happened to your joy? <laughs> Let me just point out, guys, churches just started, okay? <laughs> like Jesus, disciples, Church just started and Paul is writing a letter and he says this, what has happened to your joy? It's like, is this, is, is this not worrying that our church, which we love and care for much, so much, actually has issue with having this deeper meaning of happiness and, and sense of living from the very beginning? Do you know what happens, guys? This is what happens. He's like, he said, this is what happens. But Paul realizes that the, their church has changed so quickly that everything else is not important. What is important is to keep the law, to worship the God, to pray, and just be this way. My friends, do you know what William Barclay said? This is one of the guys. He said this, he says this. William Barclay explained, he says, the biggest damage to the church was done by long faces and black suits. The biggest damage to the church ever, it's not this or that, it's not social media or postmodernism or post-Christianity. The biggest damage done to the church is done by long faces and black suits. How often do you go to the local church and you come to the door on Sabbath morning and somebody stands on the door and he, he says to you, happy Sabbath. How often do you come to the door in New Zealand and somebody comes to you and says, Happy Sabbath? And, and you look at the person and you say, What did you say? Did you just say Happy Sabbath? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. It's like, say Happy Sabbath to your face. Yeah? Because, because obviously your face it just really sends a really good message. You are so happy to be here. So, so what about you say Happy Sabbath to your face? My friends, William Barclay was absolutely right that actually the fact that we are sometimes just thinking about the law and thinking about the way how we live this law, which I have nothing problem with and I think is necessary, is simply the fact that we forget that we are trying to do something in a very wrong way. My friends, I can tell you the black suits, is all, they're all around us, man. When I come to Sabbath school, sometimes I have a feeling like I just entered the, I just entered the black, man in black agency. Everybody has a little while, like, he's here, he's here, and all these things. My friends, what about if we look for like a deeper meaning in our life instead of looking for just this look which, which we are trying to portray? So here it is, guys. So my friends, today I want to share a couple of uh, joy killers and then just a couple of joy I want to uh, build this. My friends, it's not going to be very long because we all have to go a little bit outside for fresh air as well and also get vitamin D. Um, but this is it, guys. My friends, when I look at my life, I can tell you for sure that I found out some of the biggest joy killers in my life were actually coming really from within me. And that has a big thing for us. Because the topic is, the topic is this. The topic is unsatisfied generation. And do you know why we are unsatisfied generation? Because actually we don't have this deep thing in our hearts. We do not have this joy in our life. My friends, my friends, I can tell you this. Many, many authors wrote about this and they said this. They said this, that the, the God has created the man with a hole in their soul in the shape of God, in the shape of Jesus. You see, what he is trying to say is this, that you can try to put whatever you want to put in your life and you will not satisfy and you will not fill this soul. You will not stop this thirst for something more. 
I don't know how many of you here from Russia or from or lived under communism, maybe Vicky, but I can tell you this for sure. As I lived in a communist country, Robert as well, in a communist country, they tell you this, there is no God. And then if you follow the history, you will understand that during that time, there was the, the biggest abuse of alcohol, the biggest abuse of, of, of drugs, and us, but people were just not allowed to talk about this. And then when the communism left, people in droves, in masses, gave their life to Jesus because they realized that whatever they drink, whatever they eat, whatever they smoke, nothing satisfied this deep meaning, this, this thirst for God in their life. My friends, do you remember those days? Look, at, do you remember those days when, when actually, if you want to make a phone call, you had to go to the wall. One, two, hello, hello, hello. Okay, there's a wall, and there will be a phone on the wall, and then you pick up the uh, phone, you know, <laughs> and, then, and then you like spin the numbers, like, you know, like, you know, and as you spin the numbers, like you, you're, you're like making small sparks, like, tick, 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 tick. you know, you remember this stuff? You know, you couldn't just take the phone and like walk to the house and talk, you know, and like, you know, no, no, you had to stand next to the wall and because you were connected with the wire, and then you were just spinning this wheel around, okay? You see, hey, 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 we used to hate the people which had the zeros in the number because when you spin the zero, you had If somebody had a two, I'm going to go to this phone. This phone is better here because that one doesn't work. If you had the two zeros, you didn't want to call them. You're like, you need to change your number because I'm not. If you look at the world we live in today, it's a perfect world when it comes to technology. And we are still unsatisfied. My friends, when it comes to joy killers in our lives, there is quite a few, I can tell you for sure. But one of the biggest joy killers in our life, I can tell you, is unsatisfied expectations. I don't know about you guys, but everybody has expectations for you. Everybody has expectations for me. And when we don't deliver this, we have this massive hole in our life and the joy is slowly seeping away. I don't know what expectations you had, guys, for your life. And I don't know how old are you now. And did you fulfill them? Did you actually have this feeling when I'm 24, 25, when I'm 18, when I'm 35, I will be here. And now you're 35 or 24 26 and you look and you're like, oh, I'm not there. And then what happens in our life is that like we're slowly but surely, slowly but surely losing this joy in our life. And Apostle Paul again writes and he says this. He says this, he doesn't give you permission to give up, guys. He's saying, no, no, you need to fight for what you want to fulfill in your life. But what he says is very deep and profound. He says simply this, he says that we need to find a way to be happy when we are there and when we are not there. Paul even says this, I was content when I was rich and I'm content now when I'm poor. And Apostle Paul is uh, trying to tell us this, that the this is crazy stuff. If even you have a joy in your life, you guys need to be able to live this life when it's good and when it's bad. He's even explained, he says, having joy in your life is divine dimension. So like, you know, Ninja Turtles, you know, used to go from this dimension to that dimension. Yeah. So, so he, says, he says, having joy in your life is living in a divine dimension where actually whatever you, it happens, it's all right because I have this thing which is joy. Because my friends, happiness is influenced by things around us. So if I give to Robert a cheesecake, <laughs> Robert, Robert is going to be my best friend like, straight away because Robert eats cheesecakes all the time. And Robert does like, yeah. And, and, and if, I, if I go on cheesecake, and, I, and then like, and I come two seconds later, and I, I take his cheesecake away, I can tell you that Robert at that very stage, even though he loves Jesus, he is a very good Adventist, he will try to kick stick or rock or something like this, because, and, and this is what I'm saying. The happiness is influenced by the things from outside, while joy comes from within and comes directly from God. And so the choice you and I have is simple. Do we go for something which is quick, easy, or we go for something which is divine and which comes from God? But there is a problem. And the problem is this, that if you want joy in your life, which will take you through life, instead of you going in small patches of happiness, which you post on Facebook and Instagram every three seconds, just to show everybody else, I am so happy. It's like, no, you're not. I know you. Okay. And then what happened is this. You have to work for the joy. Apostle Paul said this. Listen to this, guys. So important. There is no translation. Oh, there is translation. Okay. 
Apostle Paul said this, that if you want the joy, you have to work for it. So in other words, it's like gardening. I hate gardening. I love to cut the grass and Robert likes to cut grass and trees. But I can tell you this, I hate like to do like, you know, you know put the seed, water, and then you spend like days doing this because I, I'm just not good in it. Everything I try to grow, yeah, it wasn't good, yeah. Yeah, that's for sure. And I remember this, when he explained, he says, you need to invest it, you need to plant it, you need to water it, you need to give it attention, and then the joy slowly will start growing in your life. But one of the biggest problems is, and killers is our expectations which we did not fulfill. But Paul says this, whenever and whatever, make sure that you are satisfied when he's good and when he's bad. My friends, <clears throat> another joy killer is a big one. And that is unresolved conflicts in our life. I don't, uh, I don't buy you guys, but I can guarantee you for sure that if you pull your phone right now out of your pocket, there is a person in your contacts right now which you have a problem with or you think they have a problem with you and you do not want to call them and talk to them because actually it's not your fault, it's somebody else's fault and because of this, you will just like ignore this stuff. My friends, and I can tell you one of the biggest joy killers in your life for sure is unresolved conflicts. That's the reason why Bible explains this. He said, Bible says this, if you have a problem, you have to resolve it before the sun goes down. But let me just point out guys, sun goes down very quickly these days. Actually no, it's summer, so it's a little bit longer. Thank God, you have time to resolve the conflicts. And thank God as well, first time I can say this for European Union. <laughs> it's like, we don't have roaming charges. You know, you can call Germany and Denmark and you can't call you can't go to Moldova or Serbia, you have to pay charges for that. But I can tell you this, guys, is that you can resolve the conflicts today. Or you can today start resolving the conflicts. And do you know how it starts? This is how it starts. You take the phone and you open that terrible book which holds the numbers and you spin through this and you will see the name. And do you know what you do next? This is what you do next. If you are really a man and a woman, you make a phone call and you just say, hey, hey, hi. Yeah, we didn't talk for a long time. That's right. Hey, I'm just going to say, we did not end up last time on a very good note. So I just want to say, I hope you're good. Let's talk more. If you're a man or woman. But if you are, if you are a level you should be really, then what you do is you text the message. Dear friend, <laughs> don't, don't, don't be English, please, okay? Just say, I'm so sorry what happened before, let's talk. And then they will call you because they're probably slightly bigger man and woman than you are. My friends, today's challenge is this. The first thing is when it comes to your satisfaction in life, when it comes to where you are, that you understand that, that wherever you are in your life, Paul he wants you to be content where you are, whether you succeed or not. But the second biggest killer is unresolved conflicts. My friends, today, do not let the sun go down before you send this text message. Do you know why? Because you would leave this Congress different. Because you would leave this place with the burden off your shoulders. I can tell you this, guys. There are people in your phone that you think they need to send you this text message back because it's their fault, but these people don't even know it's their fault. And you're going to wait all your life for them to understand. Oh, you hurt me. Oh, you lied behind my back. Oh, you did it. So, and they don't even know that you're upset with them. I lost my father in a motorbike accident. My dad was a pastor, by the way. He died in a motorbike accident. And, and, and I can tell you guys, I was angry for a year. And, and I was angry with so many people at that stage. Some of these people didn't even know I was angry with them. And, and you know what? The burden was so big. It's like my life was started going down like this. It's like he, and, 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 and you know, and, and it was really hard. And I remember this, I, somebody bought me a CD called Total Forgiveness and I started listening to this CD. And I realized from this CD that actually I have to make the first step. And it was horrible because they're guilty. You know, you know, you, you know they're guilty and they should do this and they're not doing it. And the CD explained, this thing explained to me, he said simply like, you know what, you're going deep in the bitterness. Only person that is losing in this unresolved conflict is you guys. Only you. And I've, I met, I, I, I was trying to be the man and I was like, oh, let, let, let me go and see them. So I went to see them, man. And I, went and I, I wanted to shake the hand. 
and the person didn't want to shake my hand. And I said this, I said, listen, I'm so sorry what happened. You hurt me, I probably hurt you. I just want us to move on. God bless you, I pray for you, and I walked away. You see, the last step of this was, I have to be able to not only be able to let these people go and give them chance to fix their lives, but you have to be able to be a man and woman of God, and you, were, you need to be able to, in the end, to <laughs> and not to pray for yourself, to pray for the person that hurts you. And this is the worst part. <laughs> you need to be able to ask God to bless them. And do you know what's sad? Which is not sad for you, but not for the, is that, that God actually might bless them. And this is the way of you letting things go and setting yourself free from the burden and stopping this hole in your life which is causing dissatisfaction, and causing this, this anger, it's causing this, this, this state in which you're in today. So the first joy killer is unsatisfied expectations. The second is unresolved conflicts. And I want you guys to know that, that you can actually make these two small steps today and you could leave this place not only different because you met Jesus again here, but because you actually decided to take steps to have a joyful life. Let me just go back for a quick. You can have a happy life, but happy life is being produced by things around you. Or you can have a joyful life, which comes from Jesus Christ himself. And I would like you to choose the second option. It takes longer. It's not easier. It takes sacrifice. But in the end of the day, this is, I think, where, which brings a fruit of satisfaction in our life. Now let's talk about a couple of joy builders. Let's take some, some steps together. I'm going to try to... I had an iPad. Did somebody take my iPad? Okay, I lost my iPad. This is not good. Okay, that's right. So let's, let's look at a couple of joy builders. One of these uh, joy yeah, I want you guys to, uh, to, to take it from this Congress, is, is in, in order for you to start building joy in your life, you need a couple of things about the God we worship, but also we need to start worshiping our God. Oh, thank you so much. That's great stuff. I lost this iPad about 60 times. It's like, yeah, people had to ship me an iPad from different countries and stuff like this. And so one of the, one of the things I want to show you, one way of the joy, building the joy, going back to the conflict is this. So this is the first joy builder, is share your problems with God in your life. Share your problems with God in your life. And let me just point out, because actually, I didn't know what even that means. What does it that mean? You're like, oh, share your burdens, cast your burdens. I'm like, what does that mean, cast your burdens? And do you know what I realized? As I went through my life, I would just carry it. And I'm Serbian. Ooh. And like three days later, I'm like, I, I'm dead. I'm dead. And like things I could do, I couldn't do. And the reason I couldn't do is because I was carrying all this. I don't want to use the words, but I was all this rubbish on myself. And I was like, no, no, no. But like, how, how is this going to help at all? And, and then I realized that the, the reason is that is I actually did not believe God, that God is going to carry the burdens for me. Do you know why? Because I thought God was too important to carry my rubbish on his bag, which smells really bad. And so and once the, one of the joy builders is that you and me share our problems with God and share them specifically with God every day. Because I can tell you, God is that big, they can deal with this. Second joy builder. Second joy builder is as well on the spiritual side. Share with God your unconfessed sins. You see, my friends, the things that happen in our life, there are so many of them. And do you know what, is, what, what we are really good about? We are really good about hiding stuff. We are so good that actually nobody else finds out about them. And do you know what gives power to the sin? What gives power to the sin is actually that secrecy around it. Because you actually, it's like, yeah, nobody knows, man, it's all right. Nobody knows. And you think it's all right. And the sin is like, yeah, we're all right, buddy, we're all right. Yeah, 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 just, just do that. You're doing an excellent job. And then you will see how your joy leaks away. And you will see how emptiness moves in. And then you see yourself behind a corner in a month time. And you don't want to do anything with Jesus. You don't want to do anything with people who love Jesus. You don't want to even hear about Jesus because the emptiness is so big in your life. And the sin took over your life. That actually, there is nothing there. And then you know what happens? Then Satan tells you this. Then Satan tells you this. Like, you know what? You know what? Hey, you're a hypocrite. 
You, you just need to get out of church because, because Robert would actually, you know, Robert is, he, he's keeping Sabbath. He's not smoking. He doesn't do this stuff. And, and you know, these guys are holy. But you, you you're so sinful. And, and guess what? We hear Satan and we walk away. And we walk away because we allow doing a good moral thing. Man, I'm like, yeah, see that, guys. You know, when I fix my life, I come back. And Satan knows one thing for sure. Further away from the people that love God, which are sometimes messed up as well, we never come back. So second joy killer is unconfessed sin. And let me tell you this, guys. That's another step we can take today. We can actually bring our sins to God today. And I'm not going to ask you guys to make a confessions here and stuff for this. But I can tell you guys, this is the one way you can fight this. And that is actually by, by praying for specific sin, using the words of that sin in the prayer. Because do you know what we do? We pray these prayers like, oh, Jesus is so beautiful. Oh, dear God, thank you so much for having, giving us a beautiful day. Thank you so for the sunshine, for the birds, and for the air. And then next st stage of prayer is usually, dear God, please protect me and my family because we don't pray for anybody else. And, like, and okay, for grandmother. Please protect grandmother as well. And then we pray like, dear God, put a helmet on me and my grandmother and everybody else so we can be even double safer. And we just pray about us because that's who we are. We just pray inward prayers towards us. But, and, and, and when it comes to confessing the sin, this is how we confess sin. And dear God, forgive our sins. Amen. And do you know what it means? Nothing for you. Because we got so good in this. We got so good in this that we say a word sin, we don't even think about sin. We're like, oh, forgive our sins. So because the Bible says, if you ask for forgiveness, I will give you the forgiveness. And guess what? God forgave you your sins, but your sin remained in your life because you did not call it by name. So today maybe is a day that you start praying the prayer. And dear God, please forgive me for I have problem with alcohol and I want this out of my life. Maybe you need to pray, dear God, forgive my sin because I'm actually, I, I, I have a massive issue with pornography. Please take it out of my life. Because if you do not mention what it is, it's going to go into a group of sins and then you're going to go, oh, it doesn't matter. And you're just going to live your life day after day after day. Joy zero. And then, my friends, if you give this to God and say, God, take this away. You know what? God is so good that he honors your prayers. And he will come in your life and he will give you strength to deal step by step in your life. And as you're dealing with the sin in your life, you're patching the hole and the joy slowly starts coming back. So first joy builder, first joy builder was, um, I forgot the first joy. Share your problems with God. Second is ask for God's forgiveness for the unconfessed sins. And now the third one, guys is recognize that you are worshiping a joyful God. This is the last part before you all fell asleep. Thank you, Robert. When I grew up in Serbia, I don't know about you, but I always had a feeling that actually we are worshiping this God, which is really there, which is really tough God. Same, yeah. So this is what happens. So we go to church, but actually we are afraid a little bit to go to church. Because if you mess up something in a church, God actually can really punish you. In other words, you know, God was there with a big book constantly taking down your sins. And so I grew up with this image that every single time I'm actually doing something, if I offend God, which I believe, you know, at that stage very clearly, God will punish you straight away. So, so it, was, it was like I'm living my life and God is going with a, with a book and he's like, he's like, he's like, oh, 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 oh. I mess up and... The, Should I change the position? Oh, okay. And then God would like, oh, hey, here comes a Dan. Okay, let's see what he does. Oh, Dan, Thursday, 3 o'clock. Yeah, that's the sin. All right. Punish me. And I live my life in a fear of God which I worshipped. Because I had only the image of God which was there really only to make sure that he has a record of your wrong. Totally not understanding the fact that actually that God is God of love and God of justice. That there is a punishment for the justice, but there is love which actually helps cover this. And so life should not be that. My friends, I grew up my life living life in fear, not be able to love God because I was afraid of the God I was born. 
believe the biggest joy builder in our life is that to accept the fact that we serve a joyful God. There is this Bible in a text. This is the last part, guys. This is a Bible in a text which says this. It says, almost it's like, as you and angel are walking through heaven, Bible explains, you are talking with this at this very moment, he's, he's the text says, he says, he says, you as you were walking through the heaven, you heard the s s songs being sang, and the text almost like is like happening there. And then you turn towards angel and you ask angel, what is the music I hear? And then angel says these words. He says this. He says, he says, the song you hear is the song of God. He says, the text says, as as he remembered you, he is singing in joy over you. So, so, so when I read this text, I was like, are you saying that God sings when he thinks of me? And I had to read the text like 15 times. I had to open the, 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 the books to find out what it is. And the text says this, that every single day of your life, when he thinks of you, God sings. Like that, that means when God is like having a shower in a... And, like, and, then, and he remembers me, he's like, oh, oh let me sing this one. That's how much he loves you. And when I heard that, I was like, I have a, there is no, there is no religion in the world. There is no <coughs> a direction you can take that you will find God, that he loves you so much, that he wants you, he that, 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 that loves you so much that he sings every single time when he thinks of you. Sometimes I wonder, would my mother sing when she remembers me? Sometimes I wonder what my, what my wife sings when she remembers me. Or my brother would sing when she remembers me. But I can tell you for sure, the God of this universe, the God who made you, when he remembers you and your name, he sings in joy because he is so glad that you are his son and his daughter. And you know, guys... I have a feeling God is a really joyful. I have a feeling that he laughs so hard when he watches my stupid video. He was like, I was like, oh, that's just so stupid, but I love him. So I will just laugh because he is so dumb. <laughs> Guys, when I look myself and how God made me, I can tell you, he definitely, he's a joyful God. He's a funny, funny God. I can imagine this day happening, you know. It's a heaven's room, you know. And you know, on the conveyor belt, like in factories going on. It's like, like a smallest little piece of paper is coming up. It's like God is standing here. Angels are... It says Dan Stokovic. And God is like, oh, it's Dan. And the angel's like, yeah, yeah it's Dan. Let, 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 let's, let's make Dan. Huh? Yeah, yeah, let's do it. And angel looks God and God is like, hey, God, let, let, let's, let's give Dan these amazing good looks. So he looks so good. <laughs> and God, God looks to the angel. He's like, yeah, good idea, good idea. Uh, no, I have a different idea. And I can see like, you know, an other angel looks and he says, oh, let's give him this athletic body. So he, he looks, he looks like a boss. He has these big muscles and, you know, he has to go through the door like this way because he is so, so muscly and good looking. And God looks and he says, yeah, that's a good idea. No, I don't think so. And let's give him a, a small belly and, uh, and, and flat feet so people think, there's a bear on a beach. I can see guy. How the angel comes and says, God, God, let's give him a, a, this amazing intellect so he can be so smart and so, so good with English. <laughs> and God is like, no, 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 I have a different plan. And I can see how God reads dust and like takes this brain, like which says twisted brain <laughs> and gives it to me. And he says, I think that's right. Let him go. Because I believe that in life that we live, that God has made us this way because he loves us this way, because he has a purpose to live this way. And because of this, I can tell you guys, yeah, God is a joyful God because I can see this in my life. This is the end, the very end. I don't know about you guys, but I'm a little bit tired. I'm a little bit tired of living the life which... I'm trying to put the fake stuff in my life. I'm a little bit tired of trying to maybe look so happy, maybe so, I don't know what to say on Facebook or Instagram or whatever it is, because it's not true. Because actually they're saying that, <laughs> is, it, is it 70 or 80% of people actually don't share whatsoever the true story on the social media. 
And I can tell you guys, the reason maybe we are there at the moment and that we are unsatisfied is for the very simple reason that is because we decided to take steps away from God and fill it up with all sorts of rubbish. And so today, my friends, let us build joy in our life once and for eternity. My friends, learn to live the life, learn to live the life in content wherever you are. Learn to live a life in which you give your burdens to God. Live life in which you give sin, which you cannot carry anymore to God. And give everything to God and start building the joy once again. My friends, God can carry those burdens. God can help you on this journey. And I can tell you that you and me today serve a joyful God. Thank you so much for coming. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you so much for time with this amazing group of people and we don't even know where we are in our journey with you, but we are here at Valencia Youth Congress. And I know one thing for sure, God, that, that we can leave this Congress as different human beings. But it takes us to make this decision that I'm not leaving Valencia the same way I came. And, and everything is going to take us uh, away from you if, if we allow that. So today I want to ask and pray that you place the hand of anointing upon every single person here today. We praise the God that, that you take away the sins which we know are in our lives right now. And we, dear God, ask for the, co the forgiveness of those sins. And dear God, at the same time, I ask that you send a double portion of the Holy Spirit. That you revive us. That, that, that this evening when we come back for the worship, when, when, we, when we come back, uh, uh, we, or, or when we leave this place, we will live different. And dear God, for all of us who are suffering right now, we want to ask you, dear God, that you pour the joy in our lives. And that we pray, dear God, that when you come for the second time, Every single person from here can be today. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. This is the uh, end, guys. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Uh, the, uh, I, I, they didn't tell me, do we have an answer and a question session? But, but uh, if you do, I'll be here at the front, unless you want to ask the question now. Oh, there's a, there's a mic as well. Okay. It, it seems to me if there are some questions, we can deal with some questions. But if not, uh, I'll be here at the front, guys, and we can talk more. Is that right? Yeah, that way. God bless you guys. Thank you so much for being here. And enjoy, uh, enjoy the... Hey, let me tell you. It's important to me, actually. On Friday evening, we have a, a British Praise and, Praise and Worship Night, uh, which is British, by the way. Th that's the reason why it's called British Praise and Night Worship. Um, and uh, that's my country at the moment. And, uh, you know, it might stay for quite some time. Uh, and uh, I can tell you guys that uh, there will be a small choir, which is a good choir, uh, coming from London, and, um, they, and they'll be leading the praise and worship. It's not a part of the main program, just to let you know. So after the baptism, there'll be like a 30 minutes break, so you can run away. But if you want to stay here, that, you know, we want you, we want you to stay. If you want to stay, if you don't want you to just stay, because we have, to, you know, we, yeah. Uh, so 30 minutes later, guys, uh, we're gonna have a praise and worship night. We're gonna have a little bit of testimonies, a little bit of prayer, a little bit of restoration, a little bit of sharing stuff. Uh, but uh, but uh, so please. Please come and join us. Uh, uh, there'll be a great group of people. Uh, uh, if, uh, straight after the baptism. So, uh, so let's just have a look. On oh, Friday evening, um, straight after baptism. What time is that? Uh, it is very late. It's 10.30, guys. But I know you don't sleep, however. So I just done the video on that. So I actually experienced. I, I don't know what to do with this now. I'll do this. Uh, so guys, thank you so much for coming. God bless you. And by God's grace, uh, see you Friday evening. Yeah? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.